In this video, we'll take a look at digital painting using the iPad app Procreate on the iPad Pro using the Apple Pencil. The Apple Pencil is a wonderful piece of technology. It allows you to make marks through the iPad Pro just like you would with a regular pencil. It feels very much like a real pencil and it charges very, very quickly by just plugging into the port on the iPad Pro. The program Procreate is an incredible program for creating digital drawings and paintings, especially on the go. There are a variety of traditional mark making tools that you can use. Here's a look at using a 6B graphite pencil. Now of course the marks aren't exactly like what you would expect if you were drawing on a piece of paper with a traditional drawing pencil. You can even notice that there's a bit of paper texture that shows through each mark. And if we turn the Apple Pencil on its side, we can create broader strokes that resemble smooth gradations of value. Now adjusting the pressure makes a difference, but we can also change the brush size. We can make the graphite pencil extremely small or quite a bit larger. Now we're not just limited to using a graphite pencil, of course. We have a variety of different traditional drawing and painting media available to us. We can choose to create a mark that resembles a ink brush, for example. And you can see here how the pressure sensitivity of the tablet really plays in. With more pressure, the mark becomes much wider. The marks even taper, just like you would expect if you were lifting your pen from the surface. The iPad Pro does a fairly good job recognizing what should be a mark and what shouldn't be a mark. In other words, when you're resting the palm of your hand on the tablet, most of the time you won't create a mark there, but occasionally you'll notice a few stray marks do appear. But what makes this program truly remarkable is the fact that each one of the brushes are fully customizable. So you can create a brush that performs exactly how you would want it to perform on the tablet. Of course, we can also do other things that we do in traditional media, like smudge edges. Here the smudge tool is smudging a bit of the graphite marks, and you can see how it smooths out the texture, just like you would expect with a traditional graphite drawing. Of course, there are a variety of painting brushes available as well. Here's a look at using the round brush, which is a pretty straightforward brush. But other brushes that are available include the acrylic brush, the wet acrylic brush, gouache brushes, watercolor brushes, and even oil painting brushes. One thing that's extremely nice about this program is the pressure sensitivity as I mentioned before. With this particular brush, you can see that with less pressure, less of the pigment is placed on the surface. This allows for translucent applications. This means that you can almost create a glazing effect by layering colors on top of colors that you've previously applied allowing some of the color to show through underneath will create a bit of mixing. So if we apply a bit of blue over the top, you can see that the color becomes a little bit more purple. Now, of course, this isn't perfect and it can be a little bit difficult to control the exact amount of pressure that you place on the brush. But of course, all of these parameters can be adjusted as I mentioned before. Beyond the painting brushes and the drawing brushes, you also have the feature of being able to add additional layers. Just like with Photoshop, we can put bits of visual information on each layer and go back and alter those layers if we prefer, or move them around within our layer palette. In this case, I'm applying a bit of orange over the top, but then I can just grab that layer and pull it down underneath the top layer, and now we can see the oranges behind the blue and red marks. If we make a mistake, going backwards in history is easy as well. Just tapping the surface with two fingers backs you up. We also have the ability to transform the marks or visual information if we want. By clicking on the arrow at the top, you can see we can change the size, we can rotate the information, or we can even skew it to make it appear distorted. Now there are a variety of different adjustments that we can do to the visual information as well. Here I'll apply a Gaussian blur. Taking the Apple Pencil, all you have to do is scroll it across the screen and you can increase the intensity of the blur. There's simply so much you can do with this inexpensive app. If you want to import an image to use as a photo reference, it's very easy to do so. You can even share your work when you're finished and share a video of what you've created when you're finished as well. All of these options are available under the Actions palette at the top. You can also zoom in extremely close to handle all of those small details if you want and really work almost pixel by pixel if you prefer. Now, this is really my first impressions of using the Procreate program, and this is really my first digital painting using this program as well. I chose to pick a subject that was going to be a bit challenging here with the sea turtle. 
I started with an acrylic brush and just started making marks right from the start. I wanted to keep things fairly loose at the beginning and progressively I became more detailed with the marks. You can't really tell here from the time lapse video, but during this process I was kind of working out how the program works and how the brushes behave. Just like with any drawing or painting medium, there is a time period where you have to experiment a little bit and learn the ins and outs of using that particular medium. And drawing on an iPad just like this is no different. There is a level of experimentation that has to take place before you start to feel comfortable. Throughout the process, I became more comfortable with the marks that I was making and felt that I had quite a bit more control over the marks themselves. For this first drawing, I basically worked on one layer. I did apply a second layer as a background afterwards, but as I worked, I also became so excited about the program and impressed with it, especially considering that you can take this on the go. With a little bit of experience, I decided to take another shot at creating a digital painting. This time, I just took a photograph using my iPad Pro of a ketchup bottle in my kitchen. I started with the pastel brushes, loosely sketching out the shape and the contours, and then I went in with the round brush, and I used the round brush exclusively for this painting. Again, I wanted to challenge myself with the subject that I chose. Of course, the text on the labels would be the most challenging part of this particular painting. With each area that I encountered that I thought that I might have some difficulty with, I just simply created a new layer. That way, if I did make any series of catastrophic mistakes, I could just simply go back and delete that layer. Fortunately, that didn't happen, although I did make my fair share of mistakes, but I was able to go back in history to correct those mistakes. This second painting took about three to four hours to complete, but the best part was I was able to work on this at various times in various places. In other words, I wasn't tied to my studio. I was able to take the iPad Pro and my Apple Pencil to various locations and spend time with my family while I actually worked, which might not seem like a big deal, but for me it was. Not being tied to a computer and a tablet or even a drafting table is such a huge benefit. This means that you can take your work on the go and basically have a digital sketchbook. But of course, a digital sketchbook that's far more powerful than a traditional sketchbook. Now, of course, there are going to be some limitations to taking your iPad Pro out on the go. Especially if you're working in a very bright sunlit area, it might be difficult to see some of the details that you're creating. Another issue that you might encounter in creating a digital painting like this, or really any digital painting, is the fact that we lose some of the nuances that happen in traditional drawing and painting that really show the mark of the artist. You have so much control over what you create here that it's really easy to get overly obsessed with the details. Now once your digital painting is complete, as I mentioned before, it's really easy to share what you've created. This is especially exciting if you want to continue working on a digital format in a program like Photoshop. You can export your file in a variety of different formats, including a PSD format, which means that you can open it up in Photoshop. So I exported my ketchup bottle in a PSD format, and there it is showing up here in Photoshop with all of the layers preserved. So if I wanted to, I could go back and edit this image even further and even edit the individual layers. And by zooming in, we can see that the resolution of the original file is preserved, meaning if you wanted to print it out on a sheet of watercolor paper, for instance, to give it more of a traditional look, well, you can do that as well. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to the channel. And if you're ready to learn even more about drawing and painting, then check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes video courses, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just click on the button in the center of your screen or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. Thank you so much for watching.